Hello everyone and thank you for joining me at the Invita Whiteboard. Today we're going to be talking about type 2 diabetes or what I like to call lifestyle diabetes. Okay, And it's very different than we explain type 1 to be. So here's our guy Bob again and he has a been dealing with being overweight, carrying a little bit of excess fat on his sides and in his stomach. And the main thing is, is that he's eating a lot of carbohydrate, ref, non, you know, uh, uh, refined products and sugars, all the fast food and all the you know, candy, sugar, and that kind of product, Coca-Cola, soda pop, all this stuff coming into his body and causing an enormous explosion of the body to try to absorb the sugar. And at some point, the body doesn't do it very well. So let me go back to drawing our little cell to the right. We have our little circular cell. And here we have, initially, we have our little straws, which is our insulin, right? And the job of, this, of, of, these, of these straws is to take our little sugar molecules, right, and to bring them into the cell, right? But what happens is it cannot bring it into the cell. So we start getting a lot, a lot of sugar in the body. And that sugar causes, and this can happen the same way in, in type 1, is we start to get glycosylated hemoglobin. Sugar combining into the bloodstream and causing all kinds of damage in the blood vessels, in our circulation, in our eyes, kidneys, uh, organ failure, cardiovascular failure, strokes, all because of that. Harder to heal in different parts of our body. It's very hard to get circulation and healing in those areas. So this is what's very interesting as far as the current method of treatment. There's drugs on the market, and their job is mainly most drugs on the market are designed to push more insulin more insulin out of your pancreas, okay, for type 2. And it doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Because we said we had plenty of insulin present. The problem was these insulin, these straws, are not sensitive to receiving the sugars. They're not sensitive to it. They become desensitized. And the question is, why? And that's the, the magical question. Why is that occurring? And the number one reason is because you overdid it. You overdid it. You took in too many sugars. You've oversaturated the body. This is why this is lifestyle. And this is the one you can have the most dramatic change with the way you're eating and taking care of yourself. This is the one you can really make a difference. Now, there's other factors that relate to this. Um, uh, some doctors will argue, well, there might be a genetic component to it. Well, there is, but I think you also need predisposing factors like eating a whole lot of sugar and products to make it happen. Okay. Also, the cell membrane makes a big deal. The membrane here around our cell makes a big deal because the fluidity and the movement of that membrane affects the insulin, uh, the insulin or the straw and how it receives the sugar. And here's the other one that has boggled a lot of people, stress. So let me erase this. How does the stress affect diabetes, especially this lifestyle of type 2 diabetes? So here's my guy, Bob, okay, again. And not only is he dealing with the fact that he's overweight and has some extra fat on his sides, but he has... Above his, his kidneys, he has these things called adrenal glands. And these adrenal glands, and here's the adrenals, well, under stress, they release two key things. One is called epinephrine or adrenaline. And the other one is a hormone called cortisol. And you know what cortisol does? Here's our insulin, like the straw, and here's our cell. It blocks the receptivity of that insulin. So the more stress we have, we release more cortisol. Epinephrine and adrenaline go to the liver, here's my liver, and they tell it, produce more sugar. And the liver stores sugar. The liver stores sugar. When you eat a meal saturated with fats and carbohydrates, it, shorts, it stores sugar. And then when it's done storing sugar, it sends it into the body and deposits it as fat, as fat molecules into the body. So now you've got the liver releasing more sugar. And so now we have more sugar coming into the system because of the adrenaline and the epinephrine and the cortisol that are both coming from our adrenal glands blocking the insulin or the straw from working. So stress can play a major factor in diabetes and blood sugar levels. Again, two key methods of testing. You can do the finger prick, everybody knows that, or the fasting glucose, right? Or you can do it after you eat. And what that does is it checks your sugar right there, right? Is it below 130? Or is it higher than that, right? And then the second test, which is very, very important a lot of patients miss, is something called an A1C hemoglobin. It should be run for both types of diabetes. And what this does is it gives you a three-month snapshot 
of your sugar levels in your body and how damaging they've been. So this is to give you an overview of type 2 lifestyle-related diabetes. Thank you for joining me today at the Invita Whiteboard. I hope this information is helpful.